Greetings, comrades. This is Andre Aidez de Jardin for uh, Magic the Gathering's Foundation's Cracker Pack. Meow, 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 Return to Corset, which I really enjoy. Um, it is likely going to mean the power level is a bit lower, though, which is fine. All right. You can probably hear my cat screaming in the background. I can assure you she is fine. First up, Courageous Goblin. <laughs> One red, one colorless. For a 2-2 two, two goblin, this creature attacks. We control a creature with power 4 or greater. That's This creature gets plus 1, plus 1 against Manasse until end of turn. 2-2 um, two, two with a bit of upside. Like, you can play it in the 4 Power Managers deck, but it's not a payoff. You can play it in just an aggro deck. It's, it's a C-. minus. You can play it, you cannot. Uh, Vampire Soul Caller. One black, four colorless for a 3-2 flying. This creature can't block. And when this enters your turn, target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, I really like Gravedigger effects. Uh, this is a fantastic Gravedigger effect with a great body. Um, the unfortunate part is the big drawback for this is it can't block. Um, so you're looking for a play pattern to like block and then trade off so your life total is fine or it's very acceptable in a blue black or black i should say black x type control deck um yeah c plus definitely taking over the goblin right now uh still don't want to first pick it and don't want too many five drops but this is a two for one and i think in other formats almost everything was a two for one in this format few things are two for one so two for ones are actually very good all right, get bout. Next up, we have Ambush Wolf. One green, two colorless for a 4-2 flash. When it exiles, they're up to one target creature card from a graveyard. Um, this is a C. There are actually quite a few four-power creatures to help uh, enable the four-power theme. Uh, the problem with four twos is they are blocked by, like, actually almost everything in existence. Um... And, you know, grabbing a card from a graveyard isn't nothing, but see, it's 4-2 flash. Um, you don't even need to be in, like, the 4 power matters deck. It's just fine. And uh, this card is actually better with flash, because, like, if they're attacking with, like, a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2, two, two, you know, they don't necessarily know that's here. You can often trade at parity or up in mana with this card. Like, you are super happy if you flash this out and block a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, but I'm still taking it below the Vampire Soul Collar. Ooh, think twice. One of my faves. One blue, one colorless instant draw card, and it has flashback for blue and three colors, so you can draw a card again. Uh, Going to be very important for the blue-red spells deck, which I'm assuming is here. Just good in a control deck. Um, you get a little value from discarding it or milling it or whatever. Uh, C+, plus. it is a two-for-one C+. Plus. I still think the Vampire might be ahead of it. Um, inspiring Paladin. One white, two colorless for a human knight for a 3-3. Three, three. During your turn, this creature has first strike. And during your turn, creature control plus one, plus one counters on them have first strike. There is a plus one, plus one counter theme in green-white. Um, it's obviously probably C plus there. It's probably just a C in other decks. Like, it's fine. It's playable. Um, I'm not taking it over any of these others four, but this has the this has the highest upside of all of them. Actually, if you have a bunch of creatures, the plus one plus one counters makes them very hard to block. Um, but you does have to be aggressive slanting, and there's not a lot of creatures with plus one plus one counters on them natively. So you do have to do a little bit of work, but the highest upside. All right, witness protection is one blue enchantment or enchant creature. It loses all abilities and is a green and white citizen creature with base power and toughness one one named legitimate business person. Um, these removal spells normally enchantment removal that leaves behind a body normally isn't that good. Uh, unable to scream was actually very good in the last format because it also made it zero power. Uh, a 1-1 one, one is definitely better than a 0-2. So this is like a D removal spell. You'll play it if you need it, if you need removal. But yeah, don't think like this is good removal. It's not good removal. It's very mediocre removal. The one blue man does help though. Uh, Campus Guy, two colors for a 2-1. When it enters you, you search library for a basic land card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put a card on top. Um, 
it can manifix, uh, but there's a real cost in having you draw the card next time. Like, it's not like it adds it to your hand. Uh, three mana ones that add it to your hand, super fantastic. Two mana ones that don't, this is like a D minus. Like, in draft, maybe if you need to fix your land. Like, I think this card is fine and sealed, but I don't want to be playing this. I want to not draw my card, waste a card to fix my land. All right, uncommon. Angel Finality. Uh, one white, three colors for a 3 3 flying angel. When this creature enters, exiles targets player's graveyard. Oh, sorry, 3 4. Uh, you're probably just playing the 3 4 flyer for 4. That's a good card. The exile the graveyard may or may not do something. Uh, probably just on stat C. Plus. I'll put that in the consider pile. All right, Exsanguinate. Uh, two black and X sorcery. Each opponent loses X life. Then you gain life equal to the event lost this way. This is like an F. Even in the life gain deck, this is a ton of mana for... It's like three mana to drain one. That's terrible. Four mana to drain two. Ter like, it just isn't good. Even in the life gain deck, F. Just put other cards in your deck. Ooh. Tentio of the Benthic Druid. A green and blue and three colors for a 3-3 three, three and landfall. Whenever land enters, you gain life and draw a card. One of the very few cold gold cards I will consider first picking. Uh, on a power level, this is probably a B. Uh, you often do want to wait for it to be a six drop so you can play it and play your six land and like get the value of it right away. Um, but yeah, this is a B. I'm going to put in my consider pile and I would really like to end up playing this card. Um, there is a bit of mana fixing in green, so like you could, if you're green, something else, splash it. Probably not the green aggro based decks. Like, sorry, I should say green white specifically. You can probably splash this in green red. It can probably go further. So can green black and green, well, obviously green, green blue. Uh, B, really thinking. All right, we're up to the rares now. Cool. Lunar Insight is a blue and two colorless sorcery. Draw a card for each different mana value among non-land permanents you control. N not bad. Um, I question is it really better than a Divination though? I mean, you're probably not playing it on three. Ooh, this is interesting. Uh, I'm going to put this at a C+. Plus. I actually think, now I think about it, like if you can draw three cards off of this, you're really happy, but it has to mean you're like not trading, and but you still need creatures on the board to stabilize. And that tends to be really difficult to do against uh, aggro decks. Um, but if you draw three cards off of this, you are happy, uh, but you're not going to play this on turn three. Um, just generally the blue-red control decks. I don't know, they might have occurred, but they tend to look for one big phase. I guess when you're defending, this could help fuel that. I don't know if this is better than Think Twice, though. Uh, when I think about it. Uh, think Twice is definitely slower, but it's the guaranteed two for one. It triggers spells twice. I'm going to guess, on average, this is worse than Think Twice. Um, but if you are in a blue black or blue green type deck that's gonna you know try and curve out and have things on the field you'll want to play this but on average i think for your average deck this is a, i'm going to go c minus actually i think it's significantly worse than think twice um but super fun to build around you know sometimes you'll get to do the thing and draw four cards off this but i don't think this is a exceptional card all right Flame White Phoenix is two red and colorless. <coughs> for two, two flying haste, it attacks each combat of fable, and being a combat in your turn, if you control a creature with power four or greater, you can pay it red to return this card from a graveyard to the battlefield. Um, what sucks about this is it, it can't block, I guess it can block once. You can play it turn three after combat, and then it can block once. Um, you really want this in an aggressive deck. Doesn't have to be the red green aggro deck, but you want this in an aggressive deck. And you preferably want this in a deck that's leaning red. You'd really like like 11-6 uh, or 10-7 with red mana base for this card. Because two red pips is important. Um, 
probably B minus. Like I would consider this, um, especially since you have time to build around the deck. But if you're like a mainly green four power matters deck with a little bit of red, this goes down to like a D. Like you really want to be able to cast this and on time. I'm gonna put this in the consider pile. Blanchwood armor. With two colors and a green, enchant creature gets plus one, plus one for each force you control. This is like a D minus. Um, I see people put this in their decks when they really shouldn't. You want to be like a 12 forest deck for this to go in. Like, I want this to be giving plus four, plus four in order for me to even think about playing this. And most limited mana bases can't do that. Most people I see drafting can't do that, but people love this, and like I've seen people cast this for two, and I'm like, that's terrible for two. I got Flash and Trample in the previous set for two, for, you know, that same color mana. Uh, D minus, if it's in, it's probably, if you never played it, you're probably correct for the amount of drafts that I know people do. Um, you want to be like 12, 13 forest at least. All right, we got a lovely looking planes. And we got a dragon token and another dragon token. That's interesting. So let's break it down what we have here. Um, so two for ones. Just good value card and an engine. I'm going to eliminate the angel of those four. So we have two for ones. Um... I'm going to guess just as the 5 drop, it's replaceable, so I'm going to eliminate that. Um, I think you're fine if you pick either of those. I'm going to attempt to live the dream and pick Tavioka, um, but I think if you pick the other two, you wouldn't be wrong. I think they're all very comparable. I shouldn't say this. Probably at f and I'm picking Tavioka. Probably... Um, if I'm trying to like seriously win, I'm going to take Think Twice, trying to get into one of the decks where it's amazing. But even then, its downside isn't the best. All right. This was Andre Agudez de Jardin signing off.